an important story we're working on today that I think your voice would, would really help uh, tell. Uh, quick background, we were at a Conroe ISD board meeting last night. Parents were going back and forth about whether they support or don't support mask mandates. And we interviewed one parent who is against mask mandates, against vaccines, to get her take on why. Um, and so she made lots of claims that uh, uh, on the surface, for most people seem pretty outrageous, but I'd like you to just tell us, uh, you know, straight shooter, are they false, are they true? And if you could add some context, um, that's sure. actually great. So, sure. uh, by, by the way, before you start, I think it's important to remember that, you know, a lot of these parents themselves are victims. They're, they're victims of a lot of aggressive, aggressive disinformation campaigns that are on news outlets and on, you know, and, and in social media. And, um, and if you get sucked into that rabbit hole, you start believing lots, lots of crazy things and even tying part of your identity to believe to those false beliefs. So people could be really dug in and be quite uh, loud about it as well. That's the sense I got last night too, but let me let me run through some of these claims uh, with you. I have a list here. Okay, uh, first claim, um, these, vac these are quotes. Uh, she told me these vaccinations are poison. Kids are dying because of the COVID-19 vaccine. As far as I know, no child has died of uh, any COVID-19 vaccine. Um, that's a misinformation, disinformation talking point. And a lot of it comes from the vaccine adverse events reporting system where um, it's a passive reporting system. People put things in, but it doesn't uh, mean that it's causally linked. So, so far, as far as I know, there's no evidence anyone has died from a COVID vaccine. Uh, masks do more harm to kids than catching COVID-19. Masks limit oxygen level, making it hard for kids to concentrate. Kids develop diseases due to wearing masks, and it can lead to lung infections in kids. Yeah, it's all, all misinformation. So vaccines are not harmful. They do not cause oxygen levels to drop. Um, they um, uh, don't, that there's assertions that they cause allergy or skin skin rashes. None of that stuff is true, um, uh, particularly the surgical masks. And what they'll do is they'll reduce the likelihood of acquiring the virus, especially if you're not old enough to get vaccinated. The only real other protection measure we have are masks. Uh, you answered it sort of, but the, she also claimed her words, masks do not protect you at all from catching COVID. Yeah, that's not true. That's another fake talking point. They certainly do. And, um, and, and if you're under the age of 12, one of the only protective measures that you'll have, which is quite good, is, is a mask. On the other hand, masks are much better if, if not only your mask to prevent you from acquiring the infection, of, but the other person's mask and sh shedding less virus. So the, if eff the efficacy of ma masks goes way up if everybody in the classroom is masked. Is there any science that you're aware of that backs up that kids have breathing issues or in develop diseases? because of wearing a mask on their face? No, but there's a lot of fake news out there and um, a lot of disinformation that's propagated on social media platforms. All right, uh, child hospitalizations are rising because of the adverse effects with the vaccine, not because kids are catching COVID. No, pediatric hospitalizations are way up. Um, a lot of it is due to COVID. Um, also, we have a second virus pathogen circulating known as respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV, and we're even seeing kids now with combined RSV and COVID, and masks can help with both of those uh, illnesses. But no question, we're seeing a big rise now in pediatric hospitalizations from COVID. None of it is due to the vaccine. Uh, more people have died from the COVID vaccine than COVID-19 itself. Um, 620 thousand Americans have died of COVID-19. To my knowledge, no one has died from a COVID vaccine. If you take hydroxychloroquine, evermentin, and zinc, you can beat COVID easily. Um, no, if you take hydroxychloroquine and, and ivermectin, um, you will have some protection against malaria and, and against <laughs> parasitic worm infections, uh, but it won't do anything for your COVID. Uh, your immune system is 99.9% .9 able to beat COVID, and it's a vaccine that actually lowers your immunity. No, that, that's not true at all, and that's why 620,000 Americans have lost their lives, and because they, the immune system could not handle the virus, 
and the fact that um, we are seeing this dramatic increase in hospitalizations from unvaccinated people. So n more than 95%, maybe 98% of people hospitalized with COVID right now, uh, up until recently, has been among uh, unvaccinated individuals. We are starting to see a few more breakthrough infections with Delta, and that's the reason for the boost. Uh, we, this grandparent that we spoke to uh, said her husband actually caught COVID and was able to overcome it. He, he's, he survived, he's doing fine. And she said she, she told us a story about how, you know, she was in the same room with him, she slept with him, took care of him, uh, slept right next to him and did not catch COVID. So the claim she made is you can sleep right next to someone with COVID-19 and you'll be fine. It doesn't spread easily. Well, first of all, I don't know what the evidence is that he actually had COVID or that and that she didn't have COVID. So that that's one. And, and yes, yeah, sometimes you get lucky and you don't have severe illness. And sometimes you even can be asymptomatic, even if you're older, but uh, majority don't. And that's the reason why we vaccinate. And last claim. In other, words, made, in other words, these anecdotes are, are not very instructive. Last claim she made, uh, people have a 99% chance of surviving COVID. Doesn't look that way. Um, it's it's certainly less than that, and um, you know we're and again, you know you have to look at the total numbers with six hundred twenty thousand Americans losing their lives, and the numbers are are still uh, climbing. And I think it's also important to remember that this thing is more than death. So you know if you're hospitalized, imagine the terror of a nurse telling you that you may have to be intubated, and it turns out you don't. I mean I can't imagine anything more terrifying. And now we have a, a building evidence of what's called long COVID with people having symptoms for months, including cognitive declines that resemble the cognitive declines of aging or Alzheimer's disease. So COVID is a bad actor all the way around. Parents uh, are seeing this misinformation out there. They're, yesterday, many people didn't trust what I was telling them when I cited facts from the CDC official sources they don't buy it because they're getting it elsewhere. Um, all these claims that I just read you, all of them were false. Um, how, do, how destructive do you think this is and what impact is it having on our ability to protect our kids and fight this pandemic right now? Well, unfortunately, the, the misinformation or disinformation, disinformation means deliberate intent, right now dominates the internet. It's dominating a lot of the cable news channels, especially the conservative ones. Um, and, and unfortunately, you know, there's um, that that's having a terrible effect. And the reason why COVID is accelerating in the South is because we have so many unvaccinated individuals, especially young people. We've got now fewer than 25% of uh, adolescents, 12 to 17 teenagers vaccinated in many parts of the South, including in East Texas. And even some counties like Shelby County in East Texas, only 23% of the whole population is vaccinated. So the Delta variant is just going to rip through these these counties and the ones who will suffer the most are the are the school kids because if we can ensure that everybody walks into the school is masked and everyone over the age of 12 is vaccinated except you know maybe the special needs kid who can kids who can't handle a mask if we could do that we can get the kids through the school year but we're already seeing what happens if people are defiant of masks and vaccines there's so much covid transmission people are closing shop early so even though schools are just opening now they're already shutting down back to virtual learning and that's the fault of 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 our um of the people pushing the disinformation and um because we could get these kids safely through in-person classes if everybody were vaccinated and masked one quick uh, thing that if you could clarify for me the C on the cdc's website they do uh, list uh, vaccine-related deaths listed in the VAR system or something like that. Uh, what, what I think it's like 6,289, and they listed a 0.0019% of the 350 million doses that have been administered. What, what do those numbers mean in terms of vaccine-related deaths? Yeah, I think I, think, I don't know that any of those 6,000 were vaccine-related deaths. What happened is those are deaths among people who've um, who died within a certain time frame of being vaccinated. But you have to remember that a lot of those vaccines early on were given to individuals in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. And on any given day, you're going to have older Americans who, who unfortunately are 
you know, reaching their national national natural lifespan and losing their lives, but that's unrelated to vaccines. And I think the number of us have been not very happy with the way the VAR system reports it because it makes it look erroneously like it's really linked to the vaccine when there's no evidence for that. Okay. Anything else that you want to get across, Dr. Hodges, that you feel is important? I think right now it's going to be really uncertain how we're going to get kids safely through the school year unless they're all everybody's masked and vaccinated. And unfortunately, it's not looking that way. So we're already seeing across the South and now here in Texas, a number of schools opening and then shutting down for virtual learning. And remember, most of those schools did not have to do that. We could have gotten the kids safely through in-person classes had parents cooperated with vaccines and masks. All right, Dr. Hotez, I really appreciate your time and your expertise as always. Thank you so much. Sure. Thanks, for, Thanks for giving 